Oftentimes I've found that I had the right type of tool, but unfortunately the quality of the tool itself just wasn't very good. We've got 14 brands to test, so let's get the testing underway. In the first test, we'll see how each brand performs on some mild steel. Then we'll really put each brand to the test on some high carbon 1095 knife blade steel. In the final test, we'll see if any of the whole saws can cut all the way through some AR500 armor plating. At a terrific price of only $7.99 is this NGE carbide whole saw. All of the whole saws we'll be testing are one inch or 25 millimeter diameter made in China. The NGE includes a mandrel. NGE has a total of five teeth. I use the most hardness kit to determine the quality of each hole saw construction. A most hardness kit includes eight different picks of various hardness. The higher the number on the pick, the more capable it is of scratching an object. I was able to scratch the carbide of the NGE with a number eight pick. A high quality carbide should not be scratched with a number eight or a number nine pick. For the testing, we'll be using this 15 inch Craftsman drill press. I've attached a wheel to the drill press in order to provide a constant downward force. I'm also going to be adjusting the amount of weight that we apply to this wheel based upon the hardness of the metal. Since we're using a one inch hole saw, I'll be slowing this drill press down as slow as possible to only 250 RPM. I'll be using cutting oil later in the video, but since we're cutting some mild steel that's pretty thin, I won't use it during the first test. The first piece of metal that we'll be cutting through is some 3 16 mild steel. Before each test begins, I'll go ahead and drill the pilot hole. Since hole saws vary tremendously with regard to design, the number of teeth, the width of teeth, and many other factors, there isn't a specific amount of downward force that will allow optimal efficiency for all brands. Having done quite a bit of preliminary testing, applying 10 pounds of weight to the wheel, which results in about 85 pounds of downward force, seems like the right amount. Since some hole saws are not designed to clear their own chips, I'll lift the hole saws once every 15 seconds and blow compressed air onto the workpiece to remove all of the chips. If a hole saw becomes stuck during the testing, I'll go ahead and release the hole saw and will gradually reapply the weight. The NGE seems to be performing very well cutting through the mild steel. As it was just about finished drilling through the steel, I had to lift and release the bit several times. 35 seconds for the NGE. The NGE held up fairly well, but one of the carbide teeth experienced a little bit of damage. At a price of $8.42 is this Irwin bimetal hole saw. The Irwin did not include the mandrel. The Irwin has a total of 14 teeth. The hardness of the teeth is around an eight. The piece of steel that we'll be using was cooled to around 75 degrees Fahrenheit between each of the tests. And the Irwin made very quick work of the mild steel, cutting all the way through it in only 23 seconds, 12 seconds faster than the NGE. Only a couple of the teeth experienced visible wear. The third least expensive product we'll be testing at only $8.45 is this Morse brand carbide tip hole saw, made in USA. The Morse did not come with the mandrel. The Morse has a total of nine carbide tip teeth. Using the number nine pick, I was not able to scratch the carbide on the Morse, so the carbide appears to be of very high quality. The carbide teeth of the Morse made a wider path than the teeth of the Irwin, but that didn't seem to slow it down, finishing the job in 24 seconds, one second longer than the Irwin. Two of the carbide teeth experienced damage. We'll actually be testing two different Milwaukee hole saws. First one is this Milwaukee hole dozer costing $9.84. It has a lifetime tooth break warranty. Made in USA with global materials. The Milwaukee hole dozer has a total of 13 teeth. The hardness of the Milwaukee was around an eight. Just like the Irwin and the Morse, the Milwaukee made quick work of the mild steel with a 25 second time, which is only two seconds slower than the Irwin. The Milwaukee experienced very minor wear on two teeth. At a price of only $10.45 is this Bosch bimetal hole saw. The packaging indicates this hole saw is designed for cast iron, metal, and wood. According to the packaging, made to Bosch specifications in USA, Switzerland, and China. While the packaging indicates it could be made in USA, China, or Switzerland, the actual hole saw indicates made in China. The Bosch did not come with a mandrel. The Bosch has a total of 13 teeth. The hardness of the Bosch was an eight, the same as the Milwaukee. The Bosch started off really well, shredding the mild steel, but really began to slow down about 15 seconds into the test. 48 seconds for the Bosch. The Bosch seemed to hold up well, about the same as the Irwin. At a price of $10.98 is this Lennox bimetal hole saw. 50% longer life. Two times more durable. Made in USA with global materials. The Lennox includes the mandrel. The Lennox has a total of 13 teeth. Just like the Milwaukee and the Bosch, the hardness of the Lennox is an eight. The Lennox started off really well and didn't seem to slow down, cutting all the way through the mild steel in 29 seconds. The Lennox held up really well with only minor wear to the teeth. We'll be testing three different DeWalt hole saws. The first one costing $10.99 is this DeWalt 2X, made in USA with global materials. It claims to offer twice the life. Ideal for stainless steel. The DeWalt 2X has 14 teeth. The DeWalt 2X did not come with the mandrel. The hardness of the teeth is around an eight. 
The DeWalt 2X started out strong but seemed to lose momentum about halfway through the steel. 39 seconds for DeWalt 2X. The DeWalt 2X held up really well with only minor wear to the teeth. At a price of $12.88 is this TCT carbide hole saw. Now it does include the mandrel, made in China. The TCT carbide has six teeth and the hardness of the carbide is between an eight and a nine. The TCT carbide started out strong and didn't slow down, cutting through the steel right at 30 seconds. The carbide teeth on the TCT held up well with only minor visible wear on one tooth. At a price of only $14.69 is this five piece hole saw kit. Made in China. Each hole saw comes with its own mandrel. It has a total of 17 teeth. The metal hardness was only a six, far softer than the other brands. The no name brand hole saw seemed to be doing well for about three seconds. It finally finished the job at two minutes and 35 seconds. All of the teeth showed more wear than the other hole saws tested up to this point. At a price of $14.85 is this Diablo carbide tooth hole saw. It claims to have 50 times longer life in wood and metal. Assembled in China with Swiss components. The Diablo did not come with the mandrel and it does require the Snaplock Plus mandrel. The Diablo has a total of eight teeth and has a tooth hardness of around nine. The Diablo started out very strong but became stuck several times, slowing it down a little. It still did a great job with the 31 second time. The teeth on the Diablo still had paint on them and they look as good as new. At a price of $15.41 is this DeWalt impact ready hole saw. Made in USA with global materials. Optimized tooth for faster drilling. We're gonna test that. The DeWalt Impact Ready has 30 teeth and the hardness of the teeth is around an eight. Having 30 teeth, the DeWalt didn't seem to start off as strong as some of the other brands. 39 seconds for the Impact Ready DeWalt. The teeth on the DeWalt did experience some minor wear. At $18.57 is this Milwaukee brand Impact Ready Hole Saw. It claims to be up to 40% faster. We're gonna test that. The Milwaukee is made in Taiwan. The Milwaukee Shockwave does include the mandrel. The Milwaukee Shockwave has 24 teeth and has a tooth hardness between a 7 and an 8. The Milwaukee Shockwave started out strong but stopped making progress quickly and seemed to almost stop cutting at around 30 seconds. Unfortunately, the Milwaukee didn't finish and won't advance to the next round of the competition. At $39.43, the second most expensive brand we'll be testing is this DeWalt Carbide Hole Saw. 10 times longer life. The DeWalt Hole Saw does include the mandrel. Made in Taiwan. The DeWalt carbide has four teeth. I wasn't able to scratch the carbide with the number nine pick, so the carbide seems to be a very high quality. After briefly getting stuck at the start of the test, the DeWalt carbide shredded the mild steel, tying the Irwin for the fastest speed at 23 seconds. The DeWalt looks as good as new with no visible chipping or wear to the teeth. At $39.99, this Drill Hog USA is the most expensive hole saw brand we'll be testing. 100% lifetime warranty. The drill hog includes the mandrel. Very similar to the DeWalt, the drill hog has four teeth. I was not able to scratch the carbide teeth with the number nine pick, so the carbide seems to be a very high quality. The drill hog started off very strong like the DeWalt, but became stuck a few times, slowing down its progress. It still did great cutting through the steel in 30 seconds. The drill hog also held up really well. Erwin and DeWalt carbide tied at 23 seconds. The Morse was third at 24 seconds. Milwaukee Dozer 25 and Lennox 29. The quality of the hole for NGE is actually pretty decent. The hole size is just under one inch. The Irwin was extremely fast, but unfortunately the quality of the hole just doesn't look very good. The size of the hole is about 364 too large. The MK Morse was one second slower than the Irwin. The hole actually looks a little bit cleaner. The Morse was slightly more accurate at the one inch hole compared to the Irwin. At 25 seconds, Milwaukee was extremely fast and the quality of the cut was very good. The size of the hole left by the Milwaukee is one and three 128s. Just like the Milwaukee, the Bosch made a very clean cut. Only one and 128s over an inch, extremely good job by the Bosch. The Bosch and the Milwaukee seem to provide a little bit smoother cut than the Linux. The Lynx did a very good job, only over by 164. The quality of the finish with the DeWalt looks very good. The DeWalt is extremely accurate. The TCT carbide provided a very nice looking finish. The precision is also very impressive, only off by 1 128. The generic hole saw kit that we tested was extremely slow, but it did provide a very clean finish. 1 and 1 128. The Diablo was a very fast hole saw, but the quality of the cut isn't quite as good as some of the other brands. The size of the hole is off a little bit at 1 and 7 1 28. The smoothness of the cut with the DeWalt is probably the best yet. 1 and 3 1 28. Unfortunately, the Milwaukee Impact Ready didn't quite make, but it was very close. The quality of the finish with the DeWalt Carbide is definitely the best yet, but it's also extremely accurate. Drill Hog provided an extremely smooth cut, only one 128s over an inch. In the next test, we'll see how each one of these hole saws performs on some very hard 1095 knife blade steel. 
I'll be adding 10 more pounds for a total of 20 pounds to the wheel since this is a much harder form of steel. I'll also be using cutting oil, testing the NGE first. Since I'm using cutting oil, we'll see how each brand displaces the chips. I'll only use compressed air if the whole salt appears to stop making progress. The NGE did a terrific job managing the chips and I didn't have to use compressed air. The cutting oil and the extra downward pressure allowed it to saw through the much harder steel in only 36 seconds. The Irwin did a great job managing the metal shavings, cutting through the steel in only 30 seconds. The test piece has cooled, so let's test the Morse. The carbide tips gave the Morse a huge advantage cutting through the steel in a very impressive 24 second time to take the lead from Irwin. It also did the best yet at dispersing the metal chips. The Milwaukee Dozer did a pretty good job managing the chips, but not quite as well as the Morse. 38 seconds for the Milwaukee. The Bosch did a great job displacing the metal chips and delivered a 29 second finish only 5 seconds slower than the Morse. The Lennox didn't seem to disperse the metal chips as well as some of the other brands. A minute and 17 seconds for the Linux. The DeWalt 2X is a terrific hole saw, but it doesn't displace the chips as efficiently as some of the other brands. 140 seconds for the DeWalt. The TCT Carbide did a terrific job displacing the chips and delivered a very good time at 35 seconds. Unfortunately, the no-name brand hole saw did a poor job displacing the chips and was unable to cut through the steel. Just like the NGE and the TCT, the Diablo has big teeth and has to cut a wider path than the bimetal hole saws. 34 seconds for the Diablo. The DeWalt Impact really struggled with displacement of the chips and needed compressed air assistance several times. 44 seconds for the DeWalt Shockwave. DeWalt Carbide did a terrific job displacing the chips. Even though it had to cut a wider path than the bimetal hole saws, it managed a very impressive 25 second finish. Just like the DeWalt Carbide, the Drill Hog did a great job displacing the chips. However, it wasn't quite as fast as the DeWalt at 38 seconds. The Morse came out on top with a very impressive 24 second finish. DeWalt Carbide 25, Bosch 29, Irwin 30, and the Diablo came in fifth. I typically wouldn't use a hole saw to drill through some AR500 armor plating, but this is a showdown video. So up next, we're gonna see how each one of these brands performs. For an $8 hole saw, the NGE did a terrific job. Even with the frequent application of cutting oil, the AR500 seems to have work hardened and the NGE wasn't able to cut through the steel. The NGE did a great job almost drilling all the way through the armor plating. Four of the five carbide teeth had mild to moderate damage. The Irwin did a great job for about 10 seconds before it stopped making progress. The armor plating was just too much for the Irwin. While the Irwin did a great job cutting on the mild and the medium steel, it's just not up to the task for the AR500. All of the teeth on the Irwin are pretty dull. For an $8 hole saw, the Morse did a great job. It just didn't want to give up, but ran out of steam after about a minute. The Morse did a very good job, but it did not cut as deep as the NGE. Most of the teeth in the Morse are still in great shape. The Milwaukee Dozer started off strong, but stopped making progress after about 10 seconds. The Milwaukee as well as the Irwin are both bimetal saws, and as you can see, the Milwaukee actually went a little bit deeper. The teeth on the Milwaukee Dozer have definitely experienced some dulling, but they're still in better shape than the Irwin. Just like the Milwaukee, the Boss seemed to last around 10 seconds before it stopped making progress. The teeth on the Boss seem to be in the same condition as the Milwaukee. Of the three bimetal hole saws, the Bosch did the best yet beating out the Milwaukee as well as the Irwin. The Lennox seemed to stop making progress after about 5 seconds. The Lennox as well as the Irwin did about the same. All of the teeth on the Lennox experienced significant dulling. Unlike the other bimetal hole saws, the DeWalt 2X continued to cut after 10 seconds and didn't seem to slow down until around 25 seconds. Wow, the DeWalt 2X actually did a very good job for a bimetal, doing just as well as the Morse. The DeWalt 2X teeth seem to be in better condition than the other bimetal hole saws. The TCT got off to a great start and kept cutting well over a minute before it stopped making progress. TCT has definitely done the best yet, just about making it all the way through the steel. Four of the five teeth actually remained in very good condition. The Diablo just shredded the armor plating for nearly two minutes before it stopped making progress through the armor plating. Wow, the Diablo did the best yet, definitely doing better than the TCT. Around two thirds of the teeth on the Diablo are still in very good condition. I'm not gonna test the Dewalt since the Arbor and the Drill are all one unit, and I'm not testing the others with the Drill. The DeWalt Carbide started off very strong but gradually lost momentum throughout the test. The DeWalt Hole Saw was doing a terrific job and unfortunately all four of the carbide teeth broke. Cutting through mild and medium steel, the DeWalt definitely seems like the best hole saw, but unfortunately all four teeth experienced significant damage with the armor plating. 
Just like the Dwalk Carbide, the Drill Hog started off very strong and gradually lost momentum. The Drill Hog didn't quite make it through, but it definitely did better than the Dwalk. All four teeth on the Drill Hog experienced some damage. When it comes to hole saws, one thing for sure is you don't have to pay a lot to get a lot. All three of the brands that I really liked are under $10 and performed very well, especially the US made Morse brand with the carbide teeth. It did an amazing job averaging number one for cutting speed on the first two types of steel that we tested. I also like the Milwaukee Dozer. It's a very durable hole saw, very good for a bimetal. And finally, the Irwin, in my opinion, did a very good job. All the videos in this channel are viewer suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks for watching, please take care, and I look forward to next time.